you doing, man? Good. It's nice to meet you, man. I'm a fan. Really I, so uh, fun to out with you. I'm a fan too, man. I, you know, it's funny, man. I, I feel like I know throughout the years we've kind of maybe ran into each other, maybe at NAMM. Like, if you like, I, I feel like I've been to been in certain cities when y'all were there, like maybe North Sea Jazz Festival or something like that. Something that that you was there, but I know we never like really officially like, you know, talk talk and say what's up and all that kind of stuff. So what's yeah. going? On? <laughs> Good. Yeah, man. I'm I'm good, man. I'm good. So um basically, man, the the floor is yours, man. Is it before, you know, there was no specific super duper questions or nothing like that they wanted me to ask you. They basically were just like let Mike say what he wants to say, man. So uh any anything you wanted to talk about, man? Oh, man. Um you know, I'm I'm, you know, I definitely didn't didn't have an agenda or anything, but um, I mean, I think it's cool that since we're both here, you know, um, I, 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 it could be interesting to just, I, I, I'm, I mean, I already know everything about me. I'd like to know stuff. About you. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, okay. Well, I ask you this, man. So when did, when did you, uh, when did you start playing bass? I started really late. I was, I was, a uh, um, I was actually kind of like a, I was a guitar player. I started that also when I was like 14, but then I didn't switch to bass uh, till I was 17. Okay. Uh, which I don't know, maybe that's late, maybe that's not late, but, but you know. Not, uh, it was the same as me. I mean, some, yeah. yeah, I mean, some people start when they're two, some people start when they're 20, so. But yeah. I started when I was 17 just because in my high school jazz band, there were three guitar players and no bass player, so you know. Mm. Mm. They give the bass to the worst guitar player, you know. <laughs> so that's that's how I started. Um, and then I went to school for it at North Texas, and then I just kind of like never. I mean, now now I play a lot of guitar when I'm like recording or sometimes yeah. with some bands or whatever. But I, mostly now I'm a bass player. Yeah. Okay, that's really cool, man. Yeah. So for me, I <laughs> oh man, I got a horrible like it's 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 so bad. I wanted to play drums first. Mm. I'm so trash at drums, dude. Like I, I've never been able to get a handle on using like my left hand to do one thing, my right hand to do another, and you know, like my feet are doing two different things. So my sister, she's a drummer. And my brother, he played bass and guitar and stuff. So my sister, she was just telling me get all these records, go get Dave Weckl, go get Vinny, and you know, anything yeah. Alex Cunha, and you know. Tony Williams and all this kind of stuff. So I was just going and just getting records and I was still trash. <laughs> so, so I, um, man, I got this Dave Weckl record, Synergy. Oh, uh, Tommy Kennedy. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. remember that record. When I was in high school, there's a, there's a film that Tommy Kennedy plays near the end of the record that's like a seven beat bass fill. And I remember yeah. kind of one of my first like bass moment like yeah, you know, where I was like, oh my god, I gotta play this instrument. Yeah. That's wild. I love that record actually. I've heard it in fifteen years, but I, I yeah, loved same, it. man, same here. Like, it, bro, it was that that synergy song. Like, I was listening to the record and I was, you know, trying to shed through on drums and stuff. But when I got to the actual synergy song and Tom starts out with that solo in the beginning, yeah, dude. When I heard that, I was just like, that was my like, all right, this is going crazy. So. Yeah. Um, I didn't really start playing bass until I was like, uh, I was about to turn 15. But okay. I mean, I started late too, man. I got so many homies that, that I've been playing since I was three years old and all this kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. But, um, oh, you, man, let me say this. You said what? No, go for it. Sorry. No, no. Uh oh, uh oh. I accidentally took a picture. My bad. But. No, I was going to say uh, congratulations, too, last year, man. I know you, you put out the record, man. It's beautiful. Oh, thank you. Thank I'm listening. you. All the stuff you've done throughout your career is going crazy, obviously. I'm, everyone <laughs> watching can attest to that. <laughs> I'm sure. But, yeah, man, amazing job, bro. I appreciate that. Man. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it, it's, it's funny because uh, I think as a musician, you, there's definitely a lot of different paths you can go down 
yeah. you know, and, and um, all I ever wanted to do is basically what you've done, you know, w with your career, which is like play with, you know, huge, amazing artists and travel the world and, and do all this stuff. And, and um, you know, because I went to school in Texas, uh, there are, you know, an inc a great number of incredible musicians from Texas. I mean, a much yeah. larger number, I think. But in terms of like that kind of big scale touring stuff, mm -hmm. really like five. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, like Badu, Kirk Franklin, um, Hammond, you know, stuff. And so, it, you know, when, when I was there, the there were kind of limited options versus had I been living in New York or, or LA or whatever. And so like a lot of the stuff that I've done in my career has been just because I, I, I didn't have access to, um, mm. or I wasn't being called for, not like I didn't have, you know, I mean, probably because I wasn't qualified for the gig, you know? but like, the no, I people, qualify. People, sure. <laughs> like Dre or Snoop or what, or, you know, all these people you've worked with, like they weren't, they weren't calling. So Snarky Puppy, you know, a big reason why that's such a big part of my musical diet is because, yeah you know, the phone wasn't really ringing except for local stuff. So I put a lot of energy into that. And, and yeah. that's kind of become a typical thing throughout my life and career that I made my, my solo record, which is like just me playing and singing everything. And um, which is like a weird kind of pop record. I made it because of COVID because the phone wasn't ringing. Yeah. You know? And um, so it's, it's interesting because, because I know you've, made solo records but you did you only start doing that recently or were you doing that back in the day also i mean my first solo record didn't come out until what was it 2017 right and the next one came out i think 2019 or something like it. yeah 2019 i think but i mean it, it took me a while to even honestly man you know like it took me a minute to to, I don't want to, like, for lack of a better way of saying, like, a faster way, it took me a minute to believe that I had what it t takes to actually put out a solo record, you know, like, yeah, I was touring with Ever Snoop and all of them, and, and, you know, that was great, and I'd always wanted to do a solo record, but I didn't, you know what it was, I didn't think I could do it by myself, like, I I felt like, okay, Bubby, if you do this, you got to, you got to make sure you collab with people on every song. Or otherwise, like people, you know, they're not going to respect you if you're just writing your own music and stuff. And and there's nothing wrong with collabing, but I just, I just felt like, you know, you can't do it alone. Like you can't, you're not good enough to write a song yourself. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's the stupid way of thinking. Like you, you have to go out there for anybody that's trying to do their own solo music. Like, don't be afraid to write a song by yourself. Don't be afraid to team up with your homies either. But you have to know that, you know, you got your own imagination and that's okay. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, yeah, for me, it was, it was, it just, it was that that kind of held me up. Like I was trying, back when I was living in Flint, Michigan, that's where I'm originally from. Mm hmm I was writing stuff with one of my buddies, uh, Eddie Brown. Me and him were writing stuff together back in the day, but I just never, I never thought that I could put it out. You know what I'm saying? So, but for you though, man, I gotta say like, even, even, even though you're from the Texas area and there wasn't a lot of like a bunch of big, big gigs and stuff like that, it worked out great for you because people got a chance to, to learn about you early on instead of you like doing a bunch of stuff with people and then they're finding out who you are like they learned you kind of head on for me like I started doing Snoop and all that kind of stuff but then later on people was like oh that's Bubby you know what I'm saying right. so but you got a chance to to like show people your imagination how you write music you know how you think uh sonically and stuff like that with with notes you know like i think that's dope and it, everybody has different paths everybody has different ways that they get to where they're trying to go but 
I mean, it worked out for you, man. Like, <laughs> just looking over your career and, and the things that you've done. And, and it's not even about the achievements and the accolades. It's it's the music that has come out of your mind. Like, that's that's what I look at when I see people. I'm not necessarily looking at who they've worked with or, you know. Yeah. That doesn't determine their worth. It's, I like to hear their music, like, what do they think about? Like, I, I hear how I would put some chord changes down, but I want to know what they think. You know what I'm saying? So, congratulations. Yeah. On this. <laughs> oh, thank you. That was very, very kind of you. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, it's interesting because I think you can attack it from both ways. Like you said, that you made your name mm -hmm. alongside these huge icons. Yeah. You know, and then you kind of discovered who you were and, 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 and started to do your thing. And, and, and my thing has worked the other way around where because I, I didn't, I wasn't being called by icons. You know, I kind of just tried to do the best I could with with, you. with, with what I had. And, and um, you know, speaking to that thing that you were talking about, about being afraid because you didn't feel what you had was good enough. You know, my, my a good friend of mine um, uh, was telling me, told me this great story the other night of, uh, that he was in therapy, you know, and he was talking about, yeah, I'm just worried that the things I'm doing aren't good enough. Or they're not good enough. They're mm. not, not, not. And, um, and the therapist asked him like, good enough for who, you know? Yeah, that's and, true. And that's a, a really deep, when he told me that I was like, Oh, wow, man, that's really interesting because you think, you know, the answer to that question until you really actually start to verbalize. Excellent. It. And, you know, for everybody, for them, for the people I admire, for my, for, for but then it's like, what? You, there's no way that you're ever going to make anything. I mean, Abbey Road isn't good enough for everybody on earth. There's people who live to Abbey Road and think it sucks. Yeah, it's true. not good for them. You yep. know what I mean? So it's like, can you imagine that the, if the Beatles wouldn't have put out Abbey Road because it wasn't good enough for like Steve in Des Moines? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you know, that's ridiculous. Yeah. It's like, it's a lot of people that songs in your life. It's, yeah. Some of the some of the records that may have changed most of our life, there's people that's like, oh, that's not real music to me. But you know, this is this is why, man, and I and I feel like this is even the reason why we we go through certain things in life so we could share our testimony, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? Like for me, it was that same realization, like Okay, Bubby, you're sitting you're sitting on all this stuff you got in your mind and and all you gotta do is just press record and then put it out there. Like what's stopping you? You know what I'm saying? And and when I finally realized, like, dude, there no matter what you do, nobody is gonna not well, let me say this. No matter what you do, the entire world is not gonna love what you do. But at the end of the day, you give them something and just let people that gravitate to it gravitate to it and and it's it's for them you know what i'm saying and you can't even care about who doesn't like what or i mean i one of my biggest heroes man is john patitucci i freaking love john patitucci so much i love mm -hmm. all of these richard bona do you know how many dudes i met when i moved to la and they was like I don't really like John Patitucci. And I was just like, how? <laughs> how? How do you not? But everybody's different. You know what I'm saying? And I, I guess, you know, I was young. But at that point, I just realized, like, dude, you got to just do it for you. Like, and, and you have to make it to your liking and let people let people into your imagination. That's what making music to me is about, like, you you can't you'll it'll always be hit and miss if you're making music to try and cater to to groups of people it'll be hit and miss you know what i'm saying because there's no guarantees but if you just say well this is what i hear i like the way this sounds record you put it out there now you're giving people a piece of you you know what i'm saying and that's what i liked about your music man when i when i heard your record I was just like, man, this is this is his imagination. Like, this is what he thinks of or falls asleep to or whatever. That That's the goal. That's what it should be. You know what I'm saying? So, mm. uh, and congratulations on that, man. And um, you're, you've, you've been inspiring a lot of people all over the world. 
um, for a long time, for a very long time. And you're going to continue to do that. <laughs> you're going to continue to do that, man. And I think, I think it's beautiful the way you just, you know, you're just you like, and, and a lot of guys just from my career, like I could see you're still you, you know what I'm saying? Like you're still who you are. I love it when I see guys that haven't forgotten where they come from, you know, I'm a country boy. I'm I'm from Flint, Michigan. We had like <laughs> we didn't even have we didn't even have a Popeye's chicken in Flint <laughs> until like 2005. You know what I'm saying? Like super country, nothing there. And when I moved to the big city and I got a chance to really get a hold of, you know, all these different seeing all these different faces and, you know, seeing all this different culture, it just it really made me say like, man, Bubby, don't ever forget where you come from. My dad used to tell me that too. My mom and dad, don't ever forget where you come from. And in my career, as I've, you know, been around and seen a lot of things, I love seeing musicians, artists and stuff like that, that, that you, you can feel it on them, that they're like, they're doing what they're doing, even with all the achievements and, and recognition and stuff, they never forget where they come from. And, and it's, it's like you, some people just reek of that. Like, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, but I'm still me, you know? So I know I'm congratulating you a lot on different stuff, but I want to congratulate you <laughs> on that too, man, because you, you, you reek of that. You reek of I'm just me, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you're doing the music solely just for the sake of doing the music. You love it, and, and that's felt, you know? I'm sure everybody can agree to that, you know? Yeah, man. No, I appreciate it so very... Uh being very generous <laughs> um yeah i mean i i think it's topical too you know the grammys were last night and um yeah and it's interesting if you go through your instagram feed it's like within two days yeah <laughs> there it's like that your brain chemistry changes you mm -hmm. know what i'm mean? checking out all kinds of you get all these different emotions yeah you know like why wasn't i nominated or if you're nominated you yeah. win <laughs> or if you're nominated and you win like like yeah. like you're for it, but then all these other people that you love didn't win and then everybody's like dressed yeah. up in everybody's place and are you in the club you out of the club and all this there's like all this kind of stuff and um oh, sure. and and like you know i've been on all three sides of that yeah you know? um yeah. And, yeah and uh and i think it's it becomes easy to forget yeah. because you feel like the whole world is thinking a certain way it yeah. becomes easy to forget that that yeah, an award or, or, or a record sale or, or a stream or all of these things, they're just kind of like units of measure and, and, and yeah. there, are con there are consequences mm -hmm. of, of actions that you take and, and you don't take the actions for those reasons. You don't record a song so people will stream it. You don't make a record right. so it'll win an award. And, um, and I think that, you know, if you approach music that way without thinking about that stuff, Mm -hmm. then um for i mean for lack of a better way of saying it your life just becomes a lot simpler because you have one yeah. metric is do you like yeah. it and believe in it or not you know you don't yeah. have all these dreams sales awards accolades reviews did the times like it did we, you know if you if it's like yeah. you know and and i think it's also very important because you were saying about being yourself um you know, I think it's also very important that you surround yourself with people that do not give a shit about any of that stuff. Absolutely. You know, because it is very easy when you live in LA or you live in New York or you live in London, you live in like kind of bigger centers that there starts to be, you start feeling this kind of group mentality about, yep. you know, this stuff, these units of measure being important. But yep. also in those, you can find a, a large community of people that, that are making music that they love and believe in and, and, um, and, and I think it's important to be around those people so that when you start to stray from the flock and you start to kind of like feel like you're brand new or whatever, that you have mm -hmm. something inside you to, you know, kind of like... Uh, Tap you. Like a sense of you. Yep. You're absolutely right, man. This, this is so... Oh, my goodness. This is so, like, necessary to hear because so many people 
that are trying to maybe get their foot in the door or, you know, they've been, they got their foot in the door, but they're, they feel like, um, you know, like that plateau when you're kind of waiting for the next thing. This is, this is the thing that runs through your mind, man, especially when you see your friends and it's like they're soaring and they're, they're getting this, they're getting this. And, and it's like that, it's like that little devil in your ear, like, man, you know, maybe if you start doing this and you don't have to listen to that, you don't. Yeah. Some people, they listen and, and maybe they fall for it and then they realize it later on, like, oh, that's not cool. You know, you all, you can always start over. You can always, you know, fix it at some point, maybe. But if you can just go into it wholeheartedly to begin with, and just just close out all the all the mess and all the the flash and lights and stuff. And yes, having some homies around you that like they believe in just being them, you know what I'm saying? And doing them and that that true genuine mindset and and that true musical escape. If you if you got some homies like that, hang on to them. Don't take them for granted. Because the higher you go and the more stuff you do, the 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 more places you, you go and the more people you see and you work with, you come across a lot of dark stuff and a lot of um <laughs> a lot of interesting uh characteristics that people have. But you know, you gotta remain who you are and you have to hold on to to what made you start doing this to begin with. And I mean, I'm, I'm sure everybody here can agree. Like when we all started playing an instrument, we just was like, I just want to just play drums. I just want to just play guitar or bass or trumpet. Like you didn't care about none of the other stuff. You just wanted to play. You wanted to be able to play a song, right? And, right. and if you can just hang on to that, it, I feel like it's just, there's such a big reward just in that itself. You know what I'm saying? Just just hanging on to that alone. If there's a reward with that, but all these other perks come to follow. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it's, yeah. Sorry, y'all. Mike is on here preaching. <laughs> we on here. <laughs> I mean, we on here. Bubby, you're a you're a PK man. You have a pass. You're allowed. <laughs> oh, good. Um, this is no. I, necessary though man people got to hear this because there some people are like you know, at a fork in a row right now you know and they don't know what to do you know well i think most of the time like you said going back to the initial feeling of why you started playing music i think ultimately probably 95 percent of us who play music mm -hmm. started to play music not just because we loved it or wanted to play but because we music made us feel something that absolutely. we want to be able to make other people feel absolutely you know absolutely. that we heard a record and it made us feel emotions that we had never felt before and it, like we realized how powerful it was and we wanted to have control of yep. that power so that we could you can give you know, it to make other people, yeah feel those things feel that love or or like it opens you up i mean there's a reason why it's played in in churches and political rallies and you know i mean music is yeah. is soundtrack you know to to a lot of different situations because so it I, opens up yeah to, to receive information that can be used for good and it can be used for bad as we've seen it used you know in many times in the past and and um but i think ultimately that's what we're initially drawn to is like it we yeah. feel enriched by experiencing it and therefore you want to enrich others and it, and it's really easy to lose sight of that because you know like i said depending on your community you get in a certain community where people are talking about sales and they're talking about hardware yeah. boards you know followers like you know whatever all this all these different metrics that have really absolutely nothing to do with the quality of the art that, that you're making there are people who make incredible art and mm -hmm. rack up serious, serious you know numbers in those metrics but mm -hmm. there are also people that don't make great art and who rack up serious numbers and there's people who make great art and don't rack. so it's like it, it's it, there's there's no real relationship i think is a, a very very a very nice way to look at things to make a music that you believe in 
at least there's yes. one person in the world who's gonna like it. Yes. But if you make music true. based on what you think other people will like, there's actually a possibility that zero percent of the human population will like the music that you make. <laughs> Absolutely. It's so you true. So? It's so true. And, and you know it's crazy, man, when I moved here. Dude, I, I had to learn like about the real world when I moved to LA, man. I mean, <laughs> oh, dude, our biggest mall, our biggest mall was like a little bit bigger than a, a big grocery store. It was like a little bit bigger yeah. than Walmart. Oh yeah. You know? And and coming out here to LA, I really got a chance to see like I just got a chance to just, I came in contact with all this stuff I didn't even knew existed. And and I remember going to like my first, first big studio sessions and stuff like that. And, and I seen so many people that, you know, their motives for doing what they were doing musically, it was, it was, it was so many different examples. Like we're, we're going to make this song so we can compete with this guy or we're going to make this song because you know this this is a grammy worthy song or this is a american music award worthy song or you know and it was just like man it was so far and few the 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 amount of people that actually was just like let's just make let's mm -hmm. just make that fit to us you know what i'm saying and let's put it out there but you know, and and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna necessarily bash the guys that are going that route. Um, I don't think it's good, me personally. But what I will say is, I I have fortunately I've seen some guys that, you know, they kind of start out like that. But one thing about it, if you really love music, you can start out doing stuff and where you're you know you're competing or you're making music trying to cater to a demographic or this is that and other. You can do that. But if you truly love music, at some point, you're going to get sick of it. At some point, you're going to get sick of lying to yourself. And and you're going to like you're you're going to be hungry for that that. That true escape in music, like that true feeling, the thing that made you fall in love with it to begin with, you know what I'm saying? And I've seen some dudes I'll hear that, you know, they they started out where they were just doing it for whatever reason. And then at some point they was like, man, you know, I see some of my other homies. They're just they're just being them. I want to do that, too. So, yeah, yeah. Well, I think the, pro the, <laughs> yeah, the, the, the process of creating whatever it is you're creating should be mm -hmm. the fulfillment of your, of your vision and dream. Yeah, you know, it's it's just like yeah. it should be like turn, a turnkey shop. Like it yeah. should be, everything is done in like in in, in that moment. Like yeah. if you you're playing with people or make or recording, and the feeling that you have when you're listening to the playback or when you're playing, where you're like, wow, this was a germ of an idea, and now it's blossomed into like this beautiful thing. For me, that's the start and the end of the story. And yes. then like when it goes out into the world great you know people can love it they can hate it they can vote for it they can not vote for it they can buy it they can not buy it yes. and like those are things that you don't really have control over i mean you can plug and and promote or whatever but like what you really have control over is the actual sound of what you're doing yeah. you know and um and that's what i think is 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 important that we all keep in mind and, and that we that we think about success as a as, as like a consequence of yeah of good habits yeah of of yeah. putting time love and energy and conscientiousness yeah. into your work and 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 if success comes that's you know that's great and if it doesn't come it's also fine because you've already met your goal you've already you've already you fulfilled your dream feel, which is to be absolutely you're so right man if 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 nothing else if nothing else if you put your all into what you're trying to do you know, if, if you dedicate the time and, and you're really you're really making sure you're you're in tune with like the 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 love and the appreciation of music that's being made, no matter what happens after it comes out, no matter who acknowledges it, no matter who pays attention, buys it, you know, whatever you achieve from that, it's like that's just gonna be a perk at that point. Because the real objective was yeah. to make 
to make that thing that that made you feel so good to make it complete it get it out there and somebody somebody out there will be like man so this is what he was feeling and then they'll feel what you felt that's that right there there's no greater feeling man you know like there's just no greater feeling than than making a song especially those songs where you kind of feel like crying i know you've done this where you'll make like a you'll be making a song and and you'll come across a section in the song where you just let it loop and you just let it play <laughs> like i'll do that sometimes dude i'll make a song and it'll be like it could be like eight bars or something and i'll just let that joint loop i'll fall asleep to it and everything is and if if you can give that joint to the people and then to hear somebody hit you up like, hey man, it's this one section of the song. I just, I just let it loop all the time. Sometimes I think to myself like, dude, I know this works. I know this works when you tap into what music smells like, what it looks like, what it tastes like to you and you give it to somebody else and they can relate to it. There's no greater feeling than that more than any achievement, more than any bit of acknowledgement from anybody, just knowing that you gave people a piece of you and they can feel it somewhat the way you did, that's the best feeling in the world to me, man. The best. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I try to think about it like when you're releasing an album or something as like, or when you're, or you know, when you're writing music, like, you know, would I rather reach a very large amount of people, large mm -hmm. number of people, and reach them in a very small way? Mm -hmm. Or would I rather reach um, a small number of people in a very, in a very deep and large way? You know, and, mm -hmm. and I think that if I really had to choose between those two things, if, if I had to choose between reaching 5 million people with, yeah. and have all of them think, oh, that song's okay, or reaching yeah. five people and having all five of those people feel like, oh my God, like, you know, this speaks to me very deeply. It's like, there's no question I would choose the second thing. And then I just work at the post office or something to pay my yeah. bills, <laughs> you know, because it's like, I mean, how, also how like empty must mm. it be to walk into a room where everybody knows who you are and knows your name and knows your brand and no one respects you. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like people just yeah. think of you as like flavor of the week or, or, or that famous person that nobody really likes what they do or, or whatever. I, you know, yeah. I mean, I like, I, I mean, that would, not that I think about how people perceive me when I'm walking into a room, I mean, or at least I try not to, I guess I think about as much as anybody else does, but yeah, like, yeah, yeah. just, just, like I want to be able to go to bed at night and feel good about what I did that day. I don't. I don't want to feel like today will only be worth it if it reaches X number of sales, or if it wins an award, or if you know these kinds of things. It's like I want to be able to listen to the song when it's done and say, "Okay, today's work made me feel good, made me feel human, made me feel like I, you know, I belong on the planet for this yeah. for one day, and you yep. know, try to do some other stuff the next day, and and." And I think you have to create a habit of that because like I, like you said, you know, when you moved to LA from Flint, which by the way, I love Flint. You know, we play, we played at places that play on, on course, sports bar and grill. We played at, uh, we played at a, a biker bar there. Mama no, Soul is like one of my favorite MCs ever from, from Flint, you know? I mean, yeah, I love, I love it. And it's like, you know, you go from a place like Flint that's like real, real in every sense yeah, and you move to another bigger place like LA, and it's like you know I can imagine that that would have been a, a big shock. And so I think it's important that you create the habit of thinking in a way that's that's like, do I love this? Do I believe in this? Does it move me? Because if it doesn't move me, why would I believe that it would move anybody else? Right. right. You know? What makes you think it's gonna touch anyone else if it doesn't? Even, if you don't even care about it, if you don't even really care about it, right? What are the chances that someone else is gonna care about it? You know. Yeah. Also, it's this kind is... of it's kind of, it, it's kind of like condescending mm. and patronizing to think that yeah. oh, it's not good enough for you, but other people right. are dumb, so they'll like it. it. Like that's like that's disrespectful. Yeah. People understand. It's people understand. I mean, if you look at the greatest selling records of all time, mm. you know they're they're legendary records. Yep. 
That's true. Stevie Wonder, Beatles, Miles Davis. These are like the, you know, the highest selling records of all time. People understand good music. So it's like, give, give the people credit. Make mm. stuff you believe in. Make, make something that, 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 that you believe, you know, yeah. that everyone will believe in, you know? Yeah, this is so true, man. And this is, this is really needed. This is really needed, too, especially around this time. Uh, I know a lot, me and you both, I mean, we had a lot of homies there yesterday that was yeah. Grammy. Some of the homies won, some of the homies didn't. Um, but around this time, this for some reason, there's like a spirit in the air always mm -hmm. around homies where people are like, you know, it. I want to say like they they their mind is toiled with every year around this time because they're like, all right, what am I doing wrong? I wasn't nominated or what am I doing wrong? And, you know, everybody's human. Everybody may have that that mindset. But this conversation right now is great because people need to know that it's OK. You, you know, it's OK for you to reel yourself back in into the 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 true main objective of everything and just do it for the love do it for mm. the the purpose of of you want to make people feel something you know what i'm saying like i remember years ago man around grammy time <laughs> oh this is bad after the grammys people that i would be working with like before the grammys we would be in the studio doing our stuff and you know like you would be feeling like all this emotion and stuff like that from the music. And then after the Grammys, dudes would call and be like, man, no, nah, we got We got to switch it up. We're doing something. And it's just like, no, nah, no, we're not. No, we're not. Like, don't get sidetracked because your homeboy won a Grammy and you didn't. Like, don't get sidetracked because of that. Like, come back. Make this real music. Make this real music. You want to be able to connect with people, you know, um this is this is actually great man i'm sorry y'all we went into like preach mode mike y'all go ahead and get some orange juice ready for brother mike here <laughs> give, give, give brother mike some cranberry juice and a, and a, and a towel because you know th but this is good though man this is really good um yeah, honestly i, I don't even know how we got it oh yeah it, no, it doesn't even matter ahead, but yeah i, I think it, no, it's it's uh it's it's beautiful when people get celebrated for for the music they've made. That um that the Grammy Award thing is like, you know, I I, I think it's good. like I think about how it affected me, and and I mean it it mm. it played a huge part in why my well, my band can feed their families, you know, mm. um and and mm -hmm. I. I recognize that that they're powerful and they can they it, it can do beautiful. Nice to celebrate music and musicians, um, but I think it's also important to remember what it is that it's an award that people vote for certain things for a variety of reasons and um, and also you know to not think about justice because you know like to not think about things in terms of this person didn't deserve it, this person did deserve you know like this kind of fair air like just like don't I think just in general as musicians it's a good thing for us to not think about justice and to just think about cause and effect and actions and consequences yeah. and 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 like everybody who won or was nominated or didn't win or whatever all those things happen because of cause and effect because of actions and consequences yeah. and 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 you know I think it's a good thing to just look at the goodness of a situation like the Grammys and say like wow you know and and the stuff that you don't agree with or don't believe in just recognize that it happened because yep. things things occurred to make it happen and and that's fine and like yep. you know and and we all go through this little emotional roller coaster the week of the Grammys whether yeah man um Oh shit! Man. Did, I, did I lose you? No, no, no. But, I got, I got you. I'm just saying this is this is so true, man. You right on it. Yeah, but I, yeah, I right think on. It's, overall, I think it's a it's a nice thing, and and um and it, and as you said, it's beautiful to see friends and and great musicians celebrated, and um 
And I think we should look at it like that, like a party and, and, and yeah. go back to, to, to our normal, yeah, our normal business of making music, you know? Yeah, I agree. I agree, man. Sorry. Man, out there. well, Mike, this was lovely, man. This was a big comp uh, conversation talking about, yeah. like, uh-oh, you hear me? Am I breaking up? Okay, okay. No, this this was a great conversation. Um, I think this was so valuable for people to hear, you know, um, these types of conversations are, are so necessary considering even how music and the music industry is, you know, changing in whatever ways that might be. Um, this was great, man. This was great. Um, shout out to the music experience for asking me that it was so random. They was like, Hey man, would you mind getting on a live with Michael league? And I was like, yeah, sure. And we like, what am I supposed to do? And they was like, you guys just talk. And I was just like, okay. <laughs> All right, what, whatever you say. It's it's really cool, man, that the conversation even went here. Um, yeah. Again, dude, congratulations yeah. on everything you and And again, there's a lot of people that look up to you, man. I'm a fan. It's You got millions of fans, people that just truly love what you do. And you're a great cat. And I mean, I just, man, I, I honestly, I just wish the best for you, man, for, for many years to come. And uh, yeah, this was, this was cool, man. This was a cool little chat, man. This was really cool. Yeah, really a pleasure to finally kind of meet you, me meet you. I'm looking forward to actually yeah. doing it in the flesh and um, a really, really a pleasure to hear your thoughts before and during this, uh, this conversation and of course you know, I've been listening to you play bass for a very long time and I and I look forward to hearing you play more man so I, I hope we get to meet soon likewise man well I guess uh folks that's our time so we're gonna uh I'm about to go eat something because I'm hungry <laughs> so yeah so uh <laughs> yeah See y'all on the flip side, brother Mike. You be blessed, man, and I'll see you around. All right, Bobby. Peace, man. Yep. Take care, man. All right.